So uh, really excited to, uh, to announce a new partnership between uh, Amazon and Iris TV. And uh, really what we've partnered to, together to do is to bring uh, video level contextual and brand safety data um, to the Amazon connections marketplace. Um, what that really means is, is we're really connecting the Iris TV platform through um, our API endpoints that enable publishers to activate video level data and uh, the Amazon platform um, really building a seamless uh, onboarding and activation method for publishers. Um, you know, why that's really exciting to us is the Amazon uh, publisher services team has done an amazing job uh, with solutions like their transparent ad marketplace, their, their TAM product that many publishers in the ecosystem are, are utilizing as a sort of head of bidding and yield um, solution. And when we've been working with a lot of our publishers, we've been looking uh, for opportunities to streamline the onboarding process and to make it um, as frictionless as possible to add uh, iris enabled data. Um, so the, the iris ID as our content identifier and, and the key value pairs and the different information that we bring to market um, and helping the publisher you know, activate that data as seamlessly as, as possible. And so, uh, the integration between the, uh, the APS system and Iris TV is going to enable uh, all of the publishers that work with Amazon to activate uh, the Iris data and Iris products um, directly inside the connections marketplace uh, with you no know, development work um, and really removing a lot of the, the, technical, uh, the technical work for the product teams. Um, so that's really a, a why we're excited and, and the huge benefit to the publisher side of the ecosystem. Now, um, to switch to the buying side, uh, what we've been working on over the past two years is how do we bring video level data to market? And so how do we enable buyers and sellers to transact on the topic of content that perhaps is running adjacent to the ad? Um, and so at the end of the day, as we increase the footprint of, of supply partners that are iris enabled, we're going to increase the available inventory um, for those buyers to ensure at the end of the day, that the media dollars that they spend are uh, against inventory that's transparent and that it can be uh, targeted, it can be verified, and at the end of the day, it can be it can be measured um, to make uh, obviously the CTV market as valuable as we all know that it that it can be. Well, you raise a good point about identifiers and in the CTV space, which is cookieless. Uh, Kind of curious to know, you know, how uh, contextual advertising works there. I know, you know, in the digital space, we've seen a lot of worries about what will happen when cookies disappear and the loss of uh, um, identifiers uh, at Apple, for example. But uh, please tell us a bit more about how this works in CTV. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so contextual has been around for a long time. Um, obviously, you know, contextual uh, buying and targeting was the centerpiece of, of search, you know, understanding what a, a consumer is searching for and understanding the context of that query. Um, when the display space, you know, came, came to be, uh, contextual was at the forefront in analyzing the text uh, in an article and understanding is that page, uh, food and beverage, you know, article and page, is it sports content? Um, obviously, is it brand safe or suitable for the advertiser? And a lot of those technologies have been running on uh, things like search queries in, in search, and on page URLs in the display space. Um, and a lot of those signals are passed between sellers and buyers um, and has enabled the industry to, to try to transact in a transparent manner um, and allowing buyers to control the type of content that they want their brand message to be associated with. Um, and so a lot of these things have been the byproduct of the industry historically. Now, video and CTV doesn't operate in the same way. Um, we, we obviously don't have page URLs that are being passed you know, between buyers and sellers. There, there is no text on the page to analyze. And so really what the industry has needed in order to, to make these comparable data sets available in CTV um, is, uh, is content signals. And the ecosystem obviously is a, is a complicated place. And in order to create content signals, you really need to tie it together uh, the, the content infrastructure. So in the video space, that would be uh, content management systems, CDNs, video players, and the ad ecosystem, ad servers, SSPs, and, and DSPs. 
And so um, really you know, what Iris TV is doing is, is building a, a video data platform to connect those different constituents and enabling that data to actually be present. And so it's been a lot of work with different partners over the past uh, 12 to 18 months to, to increase the, uh, the scale of the signal um, and then to begin working on different applications that can use that signal, um, whether that be a planning solution um, for an investment team to understand how much inventory is there in CTV around food and beverage content, um, or what percentage of inventory is actually safe, um, all the way through measuring at the end of the day um, how effective a campaign was that was served to consumers watching a certain type of content um, versus, versus another. So. Um, we've been really excited at the collaboration across the, the ecosystem. This is a, a complicated space with a lot of moving pieces, um, but I think the industry is taking great steps um, to, to solving some of these macro issues that we think will unlock significant investment in, in, uh, in video and CTV. Well, that brings me to my final question about what you expect to happen, let's say, in the next six to 12 months, uh, or if there's anything you'd like to happen, is there anything that's top of mind for you or any key issues that you hope get resolved? Uh, yeah, I think at, at the moment, there's a number of things happening across the board in streaming and CTV, uh, which is um, likely to happen in an industry that's growing uh, this quickly with this many sort of moving pieces. So I think one thing that we're a little um, concerned about is the inability for buyers and sellers to know exactly what type of content uh, an advertisement is running adjacent to um, when that pertains to things like brand safety and suitability. Um, so sort of understanding risk. Um, what we want to enable is for buyers and sellers to transact on the topic of content that they believe is most suitable. And when you're not able to do that, obviously you have risk um, on, the, on the agency and the brand side an increasing risk is going to likely decrease investment over time. So um, we're, we're definitely concerned with some of the brand safety you know, issues that are still present in the CTV space, but also uh, happy to see that the industry is collaborating around how we can solve those problems because, you know, that really they are, they are complicated issues. Um, so that's one big, big item that we're sort of focused on. Um, on the other side of the fence, like we're, we've been very pleased to see um, you know, content owners adopting um, sort of content signals and, and being really open to how that new data set can, can enable them to transact in different ways, um, whether that's packaging their inventory in a, in a new and different way around certain content categories and having a discussion with uh, perhaps an investment team in a very similar way that they would in the linear space around both audience and content data. Uh, but doing that in CTV, uh, which is not something that's been done uh, at scale historically. Um, so I think those are a couple of things that, uh, you know, some, some sort of worries and concerns that the industry is, you know, currently tackling that we think are imperative to increasing the amount of investment in the space. Um, and also some, some elements that the uh, ecosystem is doing a great job in, in collaborating on together.